This presentation looks at the relationship between the Etruscans, Phoenicians and uh, ancient Hebrews. Cyclopaedia Britannica tells us that the Etruscans were an ancient people of Etruria in Italy whose urban civilization reached its height in the 6th century BC. Features of Etruscan culture were adopted by the Romans. The Etruscans formed the most powerful nation in pre-Roman Italy. They created the first great civilization on the peninsula whose influence on the Romans as well as on present day culture is increasingly recognized. Long before the days of Rome's greatness, Italy was the home of a people far advanced in civilization, the Etruscans or the Tyrrhenians. Examples of the craftsmanship can be seen in the British Museum. Volterra is an Etruscan town in the Tuscany region of Italy. High up on the Tuscany hillside. It has an Etruscan museum. Many Etruscan artifacts on display, including coinage. Lead tablets with inscriptions in the Etruscan language. Esti is also an Etruscan town in northern Italy. It too has an archaeological museum. Again, many artifacts on display in the museum, the craftsmanship of these people. And around the reception desk is the Etruscan Phoenician alphabet, the two being very similar. The Persian gold tablets were found in 1964 on the Etruscan coast of Italy. They consist of three gold leaves which recorded a dedication made around 500 BC to the Phoenician goddess Ashtoreth. They are inscribed in the Etruscan and Phoenician languages. According to Chris Smith's Etruscans, they used a language which was derived from the Phoenicians. A comparison of the Etruscan and Phoenician alphabets show great similarity. The Jewish Encyclopedia states that the Phoenicians were undoubtedly of Canaanite stock from the Levant or what we now know as Palestine of the Israeli state. However, the Canaanites were conquered and subjugated by the 12 tribes of Israel back in the 14th century BC. It came to pass, says the scripture, when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute, did not utterly drive them out. In fact, intermarried with them.
The Hebrew Israelite cities of Joppa and Dor, Tyre and Sidon were the main trading ports for the Phoenicians. But why were they called Phoenicians? In her research work, Elsa Marston states, most scholars believe it was the Greek word for purple that gave the Phoenicians their name. In ancient Greek, phoinos meant purple or dark red. In other words, the Greeks called those merchant princes of the Levant something like the purple people. But why so? Well, according to Britannica, Phoenician exports included cedar and, amongst other things, cloths dyed with the famous Tyrian purple, made from the murex snail. The rich purple dye from this type of snail was traded by the Hebrew Canaanites who then became known as the Purple People. According to the New Bible Dictionary, Phoenicia supplied the Israelite King Solomon with ships and navigators for long voyages. In his ancient history, Rollins says, most of the learned agree that Cadmus carried the Phoenician or Syrian letters into Greece and that those letters were Hebrew. A map showing the Phoenician trade routes and they navigated not only the Mediterranean but up through the Atlantic as far as the British Isles. Collins' Encyclopedia tells us that the Phoenicians founded Carthage and that Tyre and Sidon were their principal cities and that they penetrated as far as Cornwall. Cornwall then rich in tin. The Etruscans were known as Tyrrhenians. They named the Tyrrhenian Sea as part of the Mediterranean, possibly connecting them with Tyre on the Levant or Israelite coast. By 600 BC, the Phoenicians were routinely importing tin from Cornwall in the British Isles in order to make bronze, according to Britannica. In his Celtic Christianity, Arblaster says, tin and lead were much needed by the Roman Empire and transport of them to the Middle East from Britain had been established even back in Phoenician trading days. A massive Phoenician ingot was found, a tin ingot was found in St. Michael's Cornish Bay at Marazion. He says that even the name Marazion suggests Hebrew sea path. Britain was called Britannic by the Phoenicians from the abundance of tin and lead mines. It was frequented by the ablest merchants and skillfulest mariners. The Phoenicians who carefully and studiously concealed this treasure from the world. Britain continued during the time the Phoenicians flourished, sending forth its commodities to all the Mediterranean seas. The Etruscan language must have been the same or nearly so with the Hebrew and Phoenician, says Savage in his Dictionary of the Art of Printing. The letters are almost the same with those of the earliest Greeks brought by Cadmus out of Phoenicia. A 
comparison of Etruscan and Hebrew alphabet, alphabets do show much uh, similarity. As with the Phoenician, of course. According to uh, Hamilton Gray's History of Etruria, the oldest Tuscan language is like the Hebrew. She goes on to say it is almost equally interesting to remark the strong brotherly likeness between the Etruscans and the Hebrews. Numerous Etruscan coins using H-A-T or T-A-H for the name of their chief deity which corresponds directly to the I am of the biblical Hebrew God is yet another link between these people. William Betham was an English herald an antiquarian and he wrote up his literature and antiquities of the Etruscan people. He makes this point that the word hat or tar which appears on some of the Etruscan coins with Tina's head is the first person present of the auxiliary verb tar, the I am. It is remarkable that this name God gave to himself from the burning bush, I am that I am, this is my name forever. He goes on to say that the divinities of the Phoenicians and Etruscans were the same. Similar details to those recorded in the Etruscan inscriptions were also found among the Britons. The Celtic Britons found by the Romans were the same people, he says, as the Etruscans. Etruscan burials are found side by side with typical Celtic or Latin warrior burials, according to the Celts by John Hayward. There was a gradual Celticization of the local population with Latin objects appearing in Etruscan graves. By the 4th century BC, the natives had become assimilated into Celtic culture. Between the 5th and 1st centuries BC, the Latin culture accompanied the migrations of Celtic tribes westward into the British Isles, according to Britannica. By the time of Christ, Celtic descendants of the Etruscan Tyrrhenians had settled in Britain and Western Europe, eventually forming what became known as the Christian nations. It may be significant that the Apostle Paul quoted the Old Testament Hebrew Bible when writing to the Etruscan Romans which suggests that these he people had Hebrew Israelite origins. For instance, he refers to them as Abraham, our father. So in summary, the Etruscan, Tyrrhenians, Phoenicians and Celts were related peoples with Hebrew Israelite origins, not Jews, but rather some of the so-called lost tribes of Israel. In time, the Etruscan provinces on the Italian peninsula were overrun by the decadent Romans. The Apostle Paul challenged the heathenism and 
immorality of the Romans in his epistle in 60 AD. Romans chapter 1, 18 to 32. Makes for difficult reading. In 313 AD, under Constantine's edict, the Roman Empire, which included the Celtic countries, became nominally Christian nations. So we might reflect upon the words of the Hebrew Messiah, the Messiah of the Israel people, Jesus Christ, who said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it.